that is considered one of the places on Earth that is further away from any colonizing source, being colonizing sources here, continents, obviously. So the nearest point that we have to the east side is Lisbon, about 1,600 kilometers away. You work in Columbus in Canada, right? Thank you very much. And precisely to the west side, Newfoundland, 3,500 kilometers away. Round figures, yeah? Basically, this little world shows you nine volcanic islands spread across the Atlantic. Nine. And because this is an airline night, with all the emergency exits, we have nine holiday exits. Two on the east side, five in the central part, and two on the west side. So for you to know the names, let me present to you. I believe many of you will already know the nine islands, don't you? So please shout them out, starting from east to west. Come on with me. One, two, three, now. Start saying them. Yes, Santa Maria, San Miguel. Come on, louder. Uh, Cuba, Cuba is not one of them. So let's go very easily. Santa Maria, São Miguel, Terceira, Graciosa, São Jorge, Faial, Pico, Flores, and Corvo. Yes? Have you got them? Nine islands that spread across the Atlantic from one end to the other. It's around 640 kilometers. Yeah? Now, another issue about these islands that everybody asks always is, how's the weather in these islands? And I always say this, it reminds me of love. You never know what's coming. <laughs> and basically, technically speaking, we have four marked seasons. We are a perfect example of the mid-oceanic temperate weather, which is characterized by, number one, short amplitude between maximum and minimum temperatures. Maximum temperatures achieved in the summer, average 24 degrees Celsius. Yes, minimum temperatures achieved in the winter, minimum average 14 to 15 degrees Celsius, okay? Also, rain is scattered along the year, but major difference between the eastern and the western islands. It rains way far less on the eastern islands, and a bit more tropical-wise in the western islands. They're more oceanic. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the islands in general. I have to highlight a few things. So let's start by San Miguel. San Miguel is the biggest of the islands in terms of physical size, yes? We're talking about 70 kilometers maximum length, yes, 30 kilometers maximum width. It has more than 50% of the total population of the Azores. Total population of the Azores is around 247,000 people. You know it very well, madam. Yes? And basically, San Miguel has more than 50% of this population. Now, if I have to highlight some things about this island, it's precisely these things that we call caldeiras. Can you say this word? Caldeiras. Caldeiras. Yes. A bit of Canadian there. <laughs> now, Calveda, why do I mention them? Because they are definitely the fingerprint of the landscape of the Azores. All right? Every island has them, and more than one per island. Now, these islands are volcanic, and you can see the proof, the evidence of volcanism on all of them, but San Miguel is ideal. Like, for example, these hot heated thermal pools heated by volcanic action. This lady is swimming in a pool with over 42 degrees Celsius when it comes out. Huh? So it's really a youth fountain. I'm 85 years old. <laughs> Trust me. Now also, these islands, and basically San Miguel, it's very good to explain to you that although very exotic, they are cosmopolitan. We have nine islands, we have six cities, and the city of Ponta Delgada is very cosmopolitan. We talked about this, remember, madam? That's why I have this picture here. So yes, we are prepared for the 21st century. This is why I mentioned this. Now, the Azores are known for its nature, but it's not just nature. It also has a very strong cultural issue in it. And you can see this in some of its industrial legacy. Like, for example, in this case, tea. We are the only place in Europe that produces tea. It's not the fact if the tea is good or bad, that doesn't matter. It's just the fact that we still use 19th century methods and machinery to produce it. And this is free to visit. So what do I mean by this? We're talking about the Azores are full of living museums, all right, of working factories that tell you a history for centuries. Are you following me? Yes, thank you. Let's go to Santa Maria. Santa Maria was the first island to have been discovered. Christopher Columbus stopped there to put diesel in his ship before he went further, all right? And this island is a good island to tell you a little bit about the contrast of the landscape in the Azores. For example, people tend to run away from urbanized areas. Most of the Azores have got really picturesque urbanized areas. This is the kind of buildings that you see on some of the islands. In this case, the ones typical from Santa Maria. So basically, visiting, it's a different part of Portugal, a unique 
part of Europe, okay? So it's really different, and you can see it by all the influence in the urbanized areas. Also, Santa Maria is ideal for one little thing. Although the Azores are not a traditional beach on sun destination, it doesn't mean that we don't have beach, it doesn't mean that we don't have sun. Many of the islands have got outstanding beach areas, all right? And really nice sea temperatures for you to swim. The major difference is that if you're very pale at the beginning of the season and you're lying on the beach because the sand is volcanic and dark, you know, it looks like cold bars standing in the sun. <laughs> yeah? But after a few days, you just blend in, right? Now let's go to the central group, Terceira. Terceira, this island used to be the belly button of the cultural Atlantic in the middle of the 16th, beginning of the 17th century. Why all the trading that happened along across the Atlantic stopped there? Which means that this island was also very cosmopolitan in those days. And one of the highlights for this island is definitely the city of Angra do Iwiju. Why? Because it's the first city of the entire country that was considered World Heritage Site classified by UNESCO since 1983, yes? So one of the things that you have to do on this island is definitely just walk around the city of Angra. From one end to the other of the streets of Angra, it's a complete lesson of history, art, architecture, and politics from the 15th to the 21st century, yes? Now, although this island has got outstanding views, personally I love it because it shows a little bit of the temperament of the Azores. Azorians can find an excuse in everything for a party. I'm not joking. New shoes, let's do a party. New dress, let's do a party. Basically, in Terceira, and I always say this, it's not the first time that I say it, these guys know how to have fun. That's why I'm mentioning. I always say they can spend six months celebrating Carnival and the other six months getting rid of the hangover of Carnival. Yeah? That's in Terceira. So basically, these islands, they all have celebrations Going from February till the end of October, there's always something happening. Why to say that? Because here the popular participation is a bit bigger than in the, in the other islands. Now, Pico, the name says it all, Peak, is the highest point of the entire country, 2,351 meters above sea level. Yes? This is an island that really shows why we popped off out from the ocean. These are volcanoes that built up, and in this island, that is very rocky, there's one highlight that I would like to show, and it's these things that you have here. Little patch areas made of vineyards built by man, stone by stone, for centuries. Considered one of the biggest man-made stone networks in the world. And I'm always including the Great Wall of China. All right? The effort that you see there is basically to produce vineyards. It's considered World Heritage Site classified by UNESCO since 2004. Yes? Now, Four islands, two UNESCO sites, natural wonders, you name it, and we're going forward. Now also, this island is one that is very good to remind us of the relationship that we had with uh, the United States, in this case also, with whaling. We used to do whaling until, the until 1984, we don't do it anymore, all right? But the legacy is still there. Once again, nature and culture together, always. So basically, you can visit the old factories. You can see, see, still see some of these boats wandering around during the summertime for regattas. There you go, culture and free to see, all right? Now, let's go to St. George. I love this island. It's a dragon island, like I call it. And one of the highlights on this island is what we call the Fajange. Now, for those that don't speak Portuguese, here's a, a challenge. Fajange, can you say this? More wine for this table, please. <laughs> Fajans. Basically, they are flat platforms at sea level caused either by a landslide or lava flow, it doesn't matter. Why are they special? Number one, because they're all different. They have their own microclimate. In one, they produce clams. In other, they produce coffee. In other, fruit. In some, you can go by car. In others, you can only go either on a donkey, on foot, or piggyback. Right? It's like 70, there's 70 of these, 70 living museums, something different to do every single day in this island. Now, also, this island is very good to explain to you something. When you don't have beach areas, don't worry, because this is what you find. Outstanding natural pools spread all around the islands, in Pico, in St. George, you name it. And some of them are so private, so, I mean, they're quite private, because when I say so private, people immediately think, oh, I can go skinny dipping. No, no, not in the Azores, all right? Basically, they're so private that you really feel you have your own swimming pool. Now, every island has got a visiting card, definitely. One of the visiting cards 
of the island of St. George is the cheese. Now, all the islands produce cheese, right? More than one type per island. Cheese was produced to preserve the excess of milk. Another detail, just a fact, we, Azores, are responsible for close to 50% of the total cheese production of the country, all right? Which also means we produce close to 50% of the milk of the country, yeah? And basically, this is a delicacy a recipe that has been developed for 500 years. Now, this you can do on all the islands. There you go. Culture, nature, and the gastronomic experience, just all in the same day. Now, let's go to Fayal. This island used to be the core belly button of the Atlantic, uh, let's say, technological Atlantic by the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. I'll tell you why. But it's very well known, especially here in our area of Canada, because in 1957-58, there was a major volcanic eruption, and that triggered out a lot of the Azorian movement into this country. Considered one of the best documented volcanic eruptions that we had in the 20th century. Why is it special? Because it's a nature reserve, yes, because it's got one of the most interesting science interpretation centers that you can find on all the country below ground, so it doesn't ruin the view. But one of the things that I have to highlight is definitely the city of Orta, because it used to be the most cosmopolitan part of the Atlantic, during late 19th, beginning of the 20th century, because of the development of airline communication and cable, submarine cable communication. So one of the highlights is just observe the rich heritage of Art Deco and Art Nouveau that you find on this little city. All right? Now, one of the things to say about it is that this island is still very well known for those that are crossing the Atlantic. They all converge like a belly button once again for those that are crossing in little yachts. So if you go there, take time, wander around the harbor and the marina, and you will see a open air gallery of works of art of unknown artists that have been passing by the Azores. If you count them, you can imagine how many people have been across what used to be one of the islands of probably lost Atlantis. Now let's go to Graciosa. The, the name says everything. Graciosa. It's a very graceful island. An island that stopped in the 19th century, but in a nice way. It's a very rural island with over 20 uh, different windmills there. It's one of the four main areas, basically, that is included in the world list of biosphere reserves. I'm not talking just a little bit of the island, the entire island. There's four areas like this. Flores, Corvo Graciosa, and the area of uh, the Fajage of St. George. Why is this so special? Because being part of the world list of biosphere reserves, right, like under UNESCO also, means a place that has the real balance between what is modern needs and preservation of its environment, nature and traditions. So basically, this is a place where people go to work in villages with houses of the 17th century, but with 21st century Wi-Fi, yes? And then you see nature that you can't find anywhere else which has been preserved, with a lot of effort and investment, and although people still benefit from being a 21st century place, they go to work with the, you know, convertible SLK Mercedes, whatever, I always say this, I promise you that you go there, go to the village, and somebody will be parking the traditional mean of transportation besides your convertible car. And by the way, the, tra the traditional <laughs> one is, is the donkey. Okay? The, the donkey, by the way, is the white one. <laughs> I think you can see that the ears are almost the same size, but... Yeah. Anyway, finally, on the west side, we have Flores. This island, known as being very exotic, known as being very wild, known for the stories of pirates, corsairs, and buccaneers, known for the outstanding waterfalls with over 300 meters of vertical fall. All right? This island is also the big sister of one that you can see there in the neighborhood called Corvo. Now, a visit to Corvo is just to find a unique part in the world. A little island that is three by four kilometers. 460 people live there. There are roads, there are cars, there's one policeman, <laughs> one postman, one mayor, one teacher, who is also the mayor, who is also the policeman, okay? Unemployment, 0%. And let me tell you, in this village, it's unique to say, 21st century, they have everything, 
but living as a 19th century community because they really depend on each other, right? So basically, it's also the safest place in the world. And you can understand why. If something happens, they will find you sooner or later. <laughs> More sooner than later. And basically, Corvo, as the last picture, tells me a little bit of what I've been saying right now. One word to define the Azores. It's romance. In fact, it's picture like these, pictures like these that explain why the Azores have the highest birth rate of the country. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, nine islands. Nine islands that to get there, basically you fly. Five hours, five hours flight. Easy going, non-stop. So all this just on a short flight and I have my colleagues here that will give you more details. Now once you get there, there are 14,000 beds for you to stay and growing of all sorts. Local accommodation, five-star hotels, eco lodges by the beach, in the city, all right? Even the smallest of the islands has a place for you to stay. Some of them are willing for long stays, madam, just answering your question, all right? So it is definitely a place ready to receive you. Now, once you get there, there's definitely things that you have to do. Nature activities are one of the highlights. So one thing you can do, if you're a technical person, you can play golf. It's good to play golf in the Azores any time of the year. By the way, we don't have snow. Okay? The, the, last year I was here in, in, in Toronto, Mr. Carlos, remember? And it was minus 24 degrees Celsius, something like that. Uh, I have a refrigerator at home that goes to minus 18. I have no idea what that is. So golf, we have two golf courses on two islands, uh, three golf courses on two islands, San Miguel and Terceira. Easy going from one to the other, all right? Available to anyone that wants to play golf for a few days and enjoy some other activities during the next days. It's ideal for hiking. Why is it ideal for hiking? Number one, there's over 800 kilometers of hiking trails in the Azores. And they're all different on all the islands. Signposts, no dangerous animals. I was coming in the airport and I saw some signs, beware of Zika. For us, we think that's a chewing gum. We don't know what that is. We don't have mosquito problems. There's no snakes, no wolves, no bears. Okay? So it's a safe place to walk around one, two, five, eight hours and come back to your hotel and relax. Also, the Azores are the only place in the world that have the nine islands included in the global world network of geoparks under UNESCO. So why don't you experience, like I always say, to be Julie Verne, yes, going down to the girls of Earth, yeah? Why don't you go down a volcanic chimney, up a lava tube, swim in a hot, heated thermal pool? All this you can do in over 121 geosites in the Azores. Or, for example, if you're an adrenaline addict, you can try and do some canyoning. My colleagues here were there doing some canyoning. There they are, very brave. It was beautiful. Um, I won't tell you how they were walking it uh, the rest of the week. But it's outstanding, and two of our islands are considered some of the best in the world to do these activities. Now, you can also go whale watching. It's one of the top five places in the world to see whales, because we have resident population of whales, but also we're in the migratory patterns of these animals from May to October. Easy going, high success in sightings. Diving. The gentleman back there, before we started, asked me about diving. The Azores are becoming the hot spot for diving in the Atlantic. Why? Because of the biodiversity. The main currents converge into the Azores. Because volcanic bottoms make different landscape. And also, remember I told you that we had all the trading going across the Atlantic? So we have wreckage. So definitely, it's a perfect place for you to see dolphins while you're diving, or sardines like this one. Yeah? <laughs> They're quite vicious. This was the last picture of this man. All right? No, definitely, I put this one here on purpose. One of the best places to dive with blue sharks, for example, in submarine mountains. And you can do it on all the islands. It's transversal to all of them. Anyway, stand up paddle. Yes? Surf, windsurf. Everything related with the ocean, it's ideal, we are islands, and it's compact. And all these things that need a swell, well, the Azores have got swell coming from the four corners of the Atlantic. So you can always do this any time of the year. And of course, this picture is just to tell you that you can do these activities all combined, because it's a compact destination. You don't have to travel for five hours, all right, 
to go and do something. Then, I mean, after five hours, you, you, you're in the, the end of the archipelago, all right? So basically, it's a multitasking place for you to enjoy every single day. Now, if this is not your style, if you're a cultural person, remember, 600 years of history. There's not one single event in the North Atlantic that has not involved the Azores. And some of it, it's very exclusive. Going from arts, going from daily life, going from local traditions, there's basically something to learn every single day in the Azores. So let's sum what I've just been saying in a couple of phrases. What do you need to know? Nine different islands, nine different landscapes. Imagine the combinations that you can get from here in terms of holiday options. Nine different islands with outstanding nature, but a soft encounter with nature. There's nothing dangerous in the Azores. You do not need special vaccinations. It means it's ideal for families and for children, all right? But it's also not just nature. You can do local activities. It's also a place where you have culture, and some of it exclusive. You will not find it anywhere else in Europe or in the country, in the world, unless it's replicated, of course. And here I'm talking about our communities, all right? So it's a place that follows health and safety regulations that has good food. Yes, we treasure our food. With local fresh products, trust me, when we say the fish is fresh, I mean, you can see the harbor just around the corner, right? So basically, local products also. Good food and good wine. It's a place that is safe, like I told you, safe in every way, not just public order. All right? We are Europe, so we have to follow health and safety regulations. Babies are born in the Azores, cancer is treated in the Azores, so you are safe. And it's a place to enjoy and have fun with your friends. You can go out and enjoy a beer which costs less than a euro. All right? It's a buck and something, a dollar and a few. All right? A coffee is 60 cents. Uh, I think you can have fun with that. So, normally I would like to say that I think we have the top qualities, don't you? I think we have top qualities for a destination that is easy to get to, has something for everybody, something different to do, new, because it is new for your guests, all right? Uh, safe, once again, it's very important, and a place that definitely has got the right partners to take you there. And this right partner is here tonight to tell you, okay, that they're willing to work with you. So basically, I would like to tell you that all this can be summed in one word. And this is what would define the Azores at the moment. It's called sustainability. Sustainability is not the little green plant that is growing healthy, no. Sustainability is exactly this. Different things, genuine things, untouched nature, but civilized people, right? This is sustainability. Living for today, thinking of tomorrow. So basically, I hope to see you in the Azores. I hope the message was clear, and trust me, we'll be waiting for you. <laughs> uh, we have eyes everywhere. Thank you very much.